So, I mean, you know, when we have an orgasm, it releases a huge amount of neurotransmitters in our brain, in, including dopamine. It is in and of itself a, a chemical reinforcement. With the rise of easily accessible and high-speed internet, there's been a corresponding increase in pornography addiction. In fact, according to a survey by the National Center on Sexual Exploitation in 2020, 93% of boys and 62% of girls are exposed to pornography before the age of 18. This is a concerning trend, as pornography addiction can have severe negative effects on individuals, relationships, and society as a whole. One method that has gained popularity in recent years to combat pornography addiction is NoFap. NoFap is an online community and movement that encourages young men to abstain from pornography and masturbation for extended periods. By doing so, it is believed that individuals can reset their brain's reward system, decrease their tolerance levels, and ultimately break free from addiction. While there is still some debate over the effectiveness of NoFap, many individuals have reported positive changes in their lives and relationships after participating in the program. Firstly, let's try and understand where pornography addiction begins and what the slippery slope looks like. Um, so when I think about you know, the devil's laughter after, after orgasm or intercourse, um, especially, and you, you say for men, but I guess this could include women, um, I think where that's probably amplified is when sex is just an end in itself and it's not, um, you know, an expression of intimacy and love between loving partners, but it's really um, a way to get an orgasm. And, and I think, you know, w when sex becomes that and, and only purely that, especially in large quantities, then it really becomes um, all about the dopamine. Pleasure for dopamine itself is not a foreign concept. In 1970, a Canadian psychologist by the name of Bruce K. Alexander developed a study that would later be known as the Rat Park experiment where rats were put into a cage that held two water bottles, one with pure water and one laced with cocaine and morphine. The rats that had nothing in their cages except for the water were almost instantly addicted to the drugged water and continued to drink it until they died. On the other hand, when rats were placed in a cage with the same two bottles as well as toys, tunnels, and other rats for social interaction, they were less likely to become addicted. This study provided evidence that addiction is not solely a result of the drug itself, but also of the environment in which it is consumed. Young men who identify themselves as having a pornography addiction might relate to not having many social interactions, sports, hobbies, or partners, leaving them feeling socially isolated and therefore prone to the addictive digital behavior. Young men who battle the addiction describe feelings of shame and disgust with the behavior, but where does that all come from? Ready to conquer NoFap? Grab our digital NoFap guide now. End your porn addiction. Skyrocket your self-esteem and achieve your goals. Packed with proven techniques, expert advice, and relapse prevention tricks. Click the link below and break free today. The meaning that we give to that sexual act has a huge impact on how we feel about it, how we feel about ourselves. Um, you know, sex itself, I mean, as you go through life, the, the more orgasms you have, it really is like a drug. You just, we inevitably build up tolerance. We need more and more potent forms to get the same effect. You know, the, the classic trajectory of my sex addicted patients is that they might start out masturbating to sort of, you know, vanilla college girl pornography. And then 10 years later, you know, it's, it's something much more deviant than that, some sadomasochistic thing. And it's not really because they're, they're violent people or they have a preference for that innately. It's that they need some, something more to, you know, jazz it up because they become tolerant. As porn users start with more vanilla content and gradually move towards more extreme and taboo material, they may be more likely to develop addictive patterns of use due to the way that the brain responds to increasingly novel and stimulating content. Part of what makes somebody addicted is how hard they're willing to work for their drug. So my neuroscience colleague, Rob Malenka, he wants to summarize that beautifully. He does a bunch of animal studies. And he said, yeah, you know, basically, I can measure how addicted a rat is by how how hard it's willing to work to get cocaine, how many times it's willing to press that lever, you know, to get a little squoosh of, of cocaine. And that's really what separates people who become addicted to a given drug from those who don't. When we do something pleasurable, several neurochemicals are released in the brain, including dopamine, endorphins, and serotonin. These chemicals contribute to feelings of pleasure and reward, creating a reinforcing effect that encourages us to engage in pleasurable activities. However, when these behaviors become addictive or compulsive, they can have negative consequences on our well-being. 
Yeah, so serotonin is really interesting. Um, I think you know it's it's really associated with feeling connected to other people, that feeling of belonging, being part of the tribe. If you look at drugs like LSD, basically what they do is they cause a huge surge of serotonin, um, you know, in these limbic structures in the brain, and people will often report this kind of um, connectivity, um, forgetting the self. Um, feeling, you know, this peace and and this closeness, which is, of course, a really um, wonderful, wonderful feeling. So again, you know, all these drugs work in a, a slightly different way. Norepinephrine, also a very potent monoamine neurotransmitter, which is really important not just to enhance mood, but also for paying attention. So stimulants um, often work on this norepinephrine um, uh, pathways and on norepinephrine, and they get our frontal lobe really, really focused, and we get really good at sort of automatic kinds of rote tasks. So all of these chemicals are involved, but interestingly, the final common pathway for all addictive substances and behaviors is dopamine, um, and you know that 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 it's essentially the currency that neuroscientists use to kind of measure the addictive potential of something. Understanding the neurochemicals at play when dealing with addiction. One plausible question related to recovering from pornography would be asking what are some effective strategies when trying to break the addiction and would a dopamine detox do the trick? You know, I think so. I, I was doing it in my practice long before it became popular in social media. I've been practicing psychiatry for 25 years. And um, it was something that I just sort of happened along early on. I would have patients come in primarily seeking help for depression and anxiety. And early on, I would prescribe them antidepressant or do psychotherapy. Many of them who were also actively using drugs and alcohol didn't really get much better. Then what I discovered, and this is also informed by the neuroscience, um, because some studies show this too, that if instead of trying to initially target their depression and anxiety, I got them to stop their drug of choice, what happened was, and I asked them to do that for 30 days, so a 30-day abstinence trial. Um, in the first 14 days, they felt much worse because they were experiencing the universal symptoms of withdrawal. But by 30 days, they really almost universally endorsed, endorsed feeling better than they had in a really long time, less anxious, less depressed, better able to sleep. And when you look at that from the perspective of the neuroscience of addiction, it really makes sense because essentially what's happening is that the substance itself is driving the depression and anxiety. That huge release of dopamine in the reward pathway is invariably followed by a decrease in dopamine transmission below baseline, that dopamine deficit state, which is experienced as anxiety and depression. Then we reach for our drug again because we're feeling bad and temporarily it feels like it alleviates that. So it's like, oh, this is making me feel better. I should keep doing this. But in fact, the drug itself is what is driving that dopamine deficit state that makes us anxious and depressed in the first place. So the intervention is to stop using the drug, allow your own dopamine transmission and other feel-good hormones. After a 30-day recovery period from porn addiction, it can be challenging to maintain motivation and avoid relapse without a sense of purpose or direction. Finding meaningful activities, hobbies, or social connections can provide a sense of fulfillment and motivation which can help to reduce the risk of relapse. It is important to recognize that recovery is an ongoing process that requires ongoing effort and commitment to maintain. Developing a healthy mindset moving forwards is one of the keys to preventing relapse and filling the void that pornography addiction creates. The pursuit of pleasure for its own sake ultimately leads to anhedonia or the absence of pleasure in anything that we do. And so on some level, pursuing pleasure is a mistake. I mean, we're constantly being told that we should pursue pleasure and that there's pleasure out there waiting for us and that if we're not happy or, you know, ecstatic, then something's wrong with us. We need to get new friends or a new job or a new spouse. But the truth is that, that again, just this relentless pursuit of pleasure actually makes us miserable. And what we need to do is stop looking for it, stop looking for that dopamine hit and essentially try to find a way of being in the world that isn't primarily focused on rewards, but instead, um, you know, fosters a different meaning and purpose um, uh, for being. And you, you know, you hit on it exactly. I mean, people get, can get this in different ways, but, you know, finding a sense of, of 
purpose in the world or you know a reason for living typically this is living for others thanks for watching did you like this video then show your support by subscribing ringing the bell and enabling notifications to never miss videos like this thank you